Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can turn this into this. This is Air Windows LR Convolve. It was suggested that I do this. I did not realize it would lead to this much hilarity. What LR Convolve is, is very simple. It's a slightly more sophisticated way of going take the left channel and multiply it by the right channel. Not dissimilar to something like FM synthesis or whatever, you can make it go real twisted as I've just demonstrated. So you heard a little glimpse of what that was. It is one of my old vocal tracks from a song that I did in like 2023, still working on doing some of those remixes, and a sine wave. And it's easy enough to hear the sine wave. It's easy enough to hear what this is when you just straight up play it. Oh, by the way, this is what it looks like. See, turn it off and only rightful governor of your affairs. Those things have nothing to do with each other. But if you multiply one by the other, it turns into the Swedish chef. <laughs> Okay, so that's a bit of a stunt. What's happening is if a waveform is centered around a zero position, it'll go over and under the zero point, and zero is silence. That means it'll be positive or negative. If you multiply it by another waveform that's going up and down, past uh, zero. First of all, if the other waveform is silent, the result is silent because you're multiplying them by each other. If the other waveform is like a sine wave, like we just heard, what's going to happen is it'll come through with the original sound very briefly, and then it will invert the original sound. Now that sine wave is a tiny bit over one kilohertz. It's a very intrusive frequency. So what it's doing is it's taking a vocal and flipping the phase of it so constantly. And you can do other waveforms, like a, a square wave does an even more aggressive version of this with like sharp little edges on it. But it's changing the vowels and stuff around in a very silly way because it's close enough to the frequency of the voice. And that's how you do. You can get really good Dalek sounds or ring modulating sounds out of it. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what ring modulation literally is. I could be mistaken. Um, and it's yours to play with. Now, people immediately think, oh, I'm going to do things with drums. I'm going to convolve this with that and the other thing. Well, conv convolving stuff to make a reverb involves convolving a single point on like a vocal or whatever, with a whole range of points on another sound. But this is not that. This is not taking a little audio clip and convolving it with each sample. That's how you get the reverb sound is each sample is convolved by the entire noise of the reverb. This is convolving a thing with a ongoing sound. So it ends up acting a little differently. And the way I made it work better was by doing a fairly simple keeping track of what the, whether the result is supposed to be positive or, or negative and running it all through a square root uh, function for each of those variations. Because if you multiply something by something, what you're going to get is a much spikier version of either of those things. You have to do a square root because effectively you're making, you're taking a square of the input waveform. And if you run just a mono waveform or anything with significant mono content, all that's going to do is um, full wave rectify the sound. So what it's going to do is make it sound kind of nastier and grungier, but it's because all of the sounds are reflected up positively because of the way the multiplication works. 
Now you can also do other things such as that's drums convolved by a guitar sound. So you mostly hear the drums because the drums are the biggest change between loud and quiet. But you also have the drums cutting out anytime the guitar cuts out. It's a heavily distorted guitar, so that's why it makes the sound that it does. You'll notice you're not actually you're not getting the guitar coming through, and I'll tell you why. It's because the drums are too noise-like. This stuff doesn't work super well with noise-like sounds. You're going to want stuff that sounds like clear waveforms monophonic waveforms perhaps and the more you have polyphonic or noise-like sounds in each channel the more you're going to get just a noise effect as a result like this which doesn't mean you can't do interesting things like that is a guitar combined with a drum but i can also combine the drum with a race car And here's what that was. But we don't really hear that note very much. We just hear this. But it's kind of cool all the same. And more importantly, um, I don't know... If this is actually, oh, by the way, you'll notice that, that um, that's the interface. LR Convolve doesn't have any controls. So just instantiate it and start piping things into left and right. You can do that in a DAW. I would be doing it in Reaper by defining a track just for it, probably with console X channel on it, and then routing different things, hard left and hard right, into it and going from there. That's how I would use it. So there are no controls on this. It's just a faceless plugin that just makes its noise. And sometimes that's the way I like those. Um, I could conceivably think of ways to expand upon that, and I'll bear that in mind if like, I have a tough week for thinking up new things. Uh, it won't be next week because I have a crazy thing coming next week that'll be maybe a little more musical. But you can make this be musical if you want, assuming you can come up with something to do with a convolver where you can feed separate tracks from your your mix into it and then take the uh, square rooted version of the one on the left multiplied by the one on the right and this is what it does it's very good again at making dalek noises and monster sounds and it's very effective at taking simple waveforms and simple sounds and making them a lot weirder and more complicated. If you run noise-like and extremely complex sounds, like the, the um, race car combined with the drum, what you're going to get is a very dense, complicated noise that uh, might have good things going for it as well, but it's not going to act like you can put a drum combined with a guitar and get the results of both out of it. Instead, you'll kind of get the results of neither. But if you took a, I don't know, something like maybe Bitwig can do this, a envelope fault, maybe I should make a plugin to do this or add it to an upcoming version of this, make a envelope follower where it's just giving you the waveform of the you know, attack and release of any given sound. That might be a little bit more coherent, and uh, I'll see what I can do. For now, I will get back to work. I'm happy to have brought you this weird and silly thing. Maybe you'll even find it useful. If not, that's fine, I'll make more. But if it was a, if, if the moment of levity did anything for you, then that's what I would be hoping for. 
I will be either uh, live streaming on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or depending upon how things go, uh, just only Wednesdays. It'll be one or the other, most likely. And I'll be building up another backlog of plugins so that I have time to get back into my mixing and put out that album that I've told you about. But that's for later, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.